Let's talk about surveillance. I talk a lot about surveillance. I built a whole website about it, but did you know that there's more than one kind? In this video, I'm going to talk about the different kinds of surveillance, which ones that I focus on on my website and how they work. When we think of surveillance, we typically think of like cops on a stakeout or like spies, that kind of stuff. But the surveillance that I usually talk about is surveillance capitalism. This is where companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook make the majority of their money by learning as much as they possibly can about you. And then they leverage that data in a variety of ways, usually selling ads or making new products. Now, to be clear, when I mentioned like cops on a stakeout, that is a type of surveillance and surveillance capitalism works mostly with signals intelligence, which is the digital surveillance. They monitor where you go on the internet, who you message, digital footprints of like when you use your card to buy something, the purchases you make in the places you shop at. That is the type of surveillance that I'm going to be focusing on. On that note, however, a lot of government mass surveillance that you hear a lot about actually piggybacks off of surveillance capitalism. The government typically doesn't go out and build their own digital surveillance infrastructure. For the most part, they just tap into the existing infrastructure and just steal everything from there. Steal is not the right word. Often the government has total permission to do this. There was a really famous project that, as far as we know, has ended, but probably still continues under another name called PRISM. This is where the NSA made actual contracts with companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Google so that they could get access to those company servers anytime they wanted without a warrant or anything like that. Before I fully dive in, it is worth noting that there is an industry of data brokers, and these are companies like LexisNexis or Axiom. These are the guys at the top of surveillance capitalism. They try to gather as much information about you as they can from any source that they can. They'll buy it from companies like Amazon and Facebook. They'll get it from public records, DMVs, post offices, things like that, because they're not trying to sell you ads. These are the companies that get used for like background checks or like marketing people will buy customer information from these companies. If I was going to start a new barbecue place, I can go to a company like Axiom and say, hey, I want the mailing address for every person between this age and this age who makes more than this per year because they probably like barbecue and have the money for it. And then I can send them a mailer that says, hey, we're open, here's 5% off your first purchase or whatever. They are really aggressive about collecting information. It's just worth knowing that they exist. I break up digital surveillance into three categories. I call the first one consented surveillance. This is when you agree to the terms of service. It's other things that you do intentionally, but you may not realize the consequences. For example, if you sign up to both Facebook and Twitter using the same email address, they're gonna know that you're the owner of both of those accounts. You may not realize what you're doing when you agree to consented surveillance, but these are still things that you intentionally did. You checked the terms of service box. You entered in that email address. You intentionally handed over a phone number or you sent a message on that platform. The next category I call unconscious surveillance. Technically, you still consent to these, but these are the ones that aren't really obvious. These are things like cookies. They're little text files that basically tell websites where you've been. There's things like browser fingerprinting. These are all invisible things that happen in the background that you don't know about. A lot of companies, if you check their privacy policy, it says by visiting this website, you agree to this and this happens. That's a lot like saying, now that you've watched this video, you owe me a hundred dollars and you can send that to me via Monero on my website. But seriously, you probably don't even know all the information that they're collecting, IP address and location and browser information. It's not like the consented surveillance where you intentionally clicked a button or typed something in. It just happened without you even being aware of it. Now these first two categories, consented surveillance and unconscious surveillance, both of these are done automatically by algorithms, by AI, by machine learning. Humans rarely see this information. Usually this all just happens automatically. The last type of surveillance I call targeted surveillance, and this is the one that we see in movies. This involves people intentionally targeting you. This could take the form of a fake app on your phone that masquerades as something else. This could be the FBI surveillance van down the street. No, not the Wi-Fi name. You're not clever. We've all seen that one a million times. These are the ones where people are intentionally going out of their way to target you, like a phishing email, things that are specifically designed to go after you individually. So what type of surveillance do I talk about on my website? I focus on the first two. I talk about consented and unconscious surveillance. I do know a little bit about targeted surveillance, but I don't really focus on that because a lot of that stuff is case by case. And what you should do depends a lot on exactly who's targeting you, how they're targeting you, what their resources are, what your 
your resources are, why they're targeting you, all that kind of stuff. I don't think you can really make a website that says, hey, you're being targeted. Here's what you need to know. That requires a lot of sitting down and getting to know a person. Consented and unconscious surveillance, they're done automatically by machines, which means that it kind of applies to everyone and whatever technique works for one person is usually gonna work for most people, at least on a technical level. So why does it matter to opt out of surveillance at all? If this information is all information that we willingly give up or in a lot of cases is never actually seen by a human being, what's to worry about, right? To be frank, the depth of information collected is often really creepy in unconscious surveillance, for example. Some apps and services will even figure out every other device that's on your network. You wouldn't expect for that phone to reach out and say, oh, you also have a smart TV and three laptops and a PlayStation. Here's all of their addresses and here's every time they turn on. Some apps really do that. Some websites, some of you watching this probably use actually, some of them will actually say in their privacy policy that they will attempt to use external real world data to track you even further. And they're talking about things like newspaper articles, public records. How creepy is that? You probably are not okay with that. The terms of service are intentionally written to be really confusing and hide that information from you so you never think about it. Furthermore, it's important to know that when, not if, your data gets leaked, it can have disastrous effects. This data can still be harmful, even for an individual normal person. This could be something that somebody uses to stalk you or to try and steal your bank account or put malware on your computer. These are things that happen to normal everyday people. Last but not least, if enough data is collected, you begin to see patterns and you begin to be able to manipulate those patterns. And I know that sounds really far-fetched and I can't really get into it on this video, but that has actually happened. Companies like Cambridge Analytica use the data that Facebook collects in order to try and manipulate how you'll vote or what political things you believe in. Even Facebook and YouTube themselves, their algorithms will try to guess what you're interested in and feed you anything, even if it's not true, just to keep you on the platform longer. These companies are trying to manipulate your behavior. I know that sounds really crazy and really tinfoil hat, and you're like, I, I don't know, Nate, you're sounding kind of weird. I promise you it's not as far-fetched as it sounds it's already starting to happen. This is why it is so important to be aware of this surveillance, to understand how it works, and to understand how to opt out of it. In the coming videos, I'm going to teach you a lot about these specific types of surveillance and how the different tools that you use can help you opt out of this surveillance. Until the next video comes out helping you with that, feel free to check out my website, thenewoil.xyz, for more information and tools.